Okay, here's the here's the plan for today. We have a this is our last class together, our last normal class. The final will take place at 3 30 to 5 30 p.m. on Monday in this room. Uh, do not forget to come on Monday. I will not be here at 3 30 on Tuesday. Ow! I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's on set. She's I wanted to, no, I wanted to be held for having a bad day, and then my hair got caught. Her. Yeah, exactly. I got yeah. too many um, So our our goal is we want to we want to try to stuff as much probability in your head as we can manage no. in a half an hour. Um, uh, remember, this was the probability stuff was stuck on the end of the course, and I erroneously thought that it wasn't on the final very much. I think it likely will be on the final. So we ended on Tuesday with our newts about the different kinds of events that can happen in the world that we might calculate probabilities for. And I invited you to make an attempt at the second page. So I think what would make sense for today's agenda is to get one more pass in your brain on probability stuff sample questions and then we need to do a rapid review of uh, accuracy versus precision the way i taught it at the beginning of the course is a little different than the way they ask the questions on the final i have almost literally copied the very sentence structure that's on the sample finals about accuracy and precision onto your part two of the review and so second part of class is to review how to do these questions these are very straightforward compared to the probability this will feel very nice. It will flow. Um, and then remember unit conversions and the metric system. Um, I, I made some wicked hot unit conversion problems because I'd like you to. That's the thing we did longest to go. So don't wait till Sunday night or Monday morning at 10 a.m. to try the unit conversion problem. They're, they're pretty hefty. Um, so I want to do unit conversions. Uh, I wanted the first problem together, the 1.21 gigawatts, um, to review metric um, metric prefixes, which is something that I feel like we didn't cover very well. Uh, remember that our uh, review is Sunday night on Zoom from uh, 8 a.m. or 8, sorry, 8 p.m. to 9:30 p.m. ish um, on the Zoom link that I've always used. It was in the email. I'll send a reminder out to the um, I will also, my plan is to have grades, um, grades and uh, hints by uh, Saturday afternoon. Um, I have a major deadline tomorrow at two and I will need to sleep after that. And then I will get up and I will work on grading on Saturday. So I apologize again for being so behind. Making all this stuff from scratch has just taken longer than I thought. Um, what, what are they saying? I'm oh, was that the one where it was already there. Uh, so let's. Are you ready for some probability? Can we get some some probabilities in your brains? Okay. So the second page of your probability document are some scenarios that deserve some processing. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, did we do the first one together? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. We have that's the one we, okay, um, let's do some smoothies. So our sequence is we read about the scenario. Remember, word problem. Life is a word problem. You have to. The goal is to figure out what of these five situations are. Are we talking about two different occurrences? They can. Those occurrences can either af not affect each other. Think. Flipping a coin, flipping coin once doesn't mean that the probability of the coin changes the next flip. Dependent events, the classic scenario here is you are actually taking values out of a pool. So if I'm doing two draws from the deck, the first draw from the deck has a probability based on one out of how many cards. And then a dependent event says, and once I have drawn that first card, I change the composition of this deck. So we can't just multiply PA times probability of event B like we could if they're independent. 
we have to think carefully and make a probability probability of the event B, in our case, it was drawing a heart under the assumption that we succeeded at our first event. So these two are for situations in which we have two plus trials of something. Um, the overlapping, the non-overlapping events, these are, we can think of these as single trials that we are willing to accept different outcomes or different outcomes to specify the event. So remember this was, I'm happy with a five or a six. Can I roll a five and a six? No, no it's impossible on a die because if the five is up, the six is not. So that was, that's considered non-overlapping events because they can't occur together. And we're saying that there's gonna be one event. I'm gonna roll the die. And I'm willing, there are two events inside of the possible events that meet my criteria. And that's where we use the or. I'm happy with an A or a B. I'm happy with a five or a six. In that case, we just compute the likelihood of getting a five and we add it to the likelihood of getting a six. Hi, Fulgence. Welcome back. Uh, we've got a light, light room. You can have your whole row to yourself almost. Um, overlapping events, this is the other side of the or world, where this was our case in which we wanted to know, I'm happy with a face card or a spade, but what, what made it tricky? Who made it tricky? The queen made it tricky because the queen satisfied both sides of our or. So we had to do the fancy math. Our queen had to be subtracted out. So notice the patterns in these equations. I'm, I'm sad they don't have an equation sheet for your brain. These are kind of tricky to squeeze in. So that your my recommendation, the key to memorizing is the patterns. Don't try to stuff it in just randomly. Say, okay, if I'm talking about two or more individual trials, I'm using multiplication. If they affect each other, I have to assume that the ones that come before happened. If they don't affect each other, I just multiply them and move on with my life. If I'm talking about an or scenario, I use addition. So look for those patterns. If I have a outcome that one that satisfies both of my criteria, then I need to do this subtraction that makes use of this. See how in this formula, we take the individual probability of getting a face card plus the individual probability of a spade and we subtract and we got to do our a little substitution we got to go up here and say oh p a and b that means how do i get the probability of a and b happening multiplication so this is the most compound of our relationships so look for patterns that's your key um I did it in a matrix because it helps me to remember them in a matrix. So if I'm studying for this test, I would make myself a little grid like this and say independent and dependent um, over or non overlap and overlap and then work on my I can start with my most basic relationships a times B a times probability of B given A, so those are my basic relationships. If they're non overlapping, it's just probability of A plus probability of B. If they're overlapping, I've got to do my wild west. I've got to do probability, probability of A plus probability of B minus P, A, A and B. I would just put P, A times B in my head. So look for, look for ways that you can organize it in a little grid that gives your brain a structure. Don't try to just cram them in as floating things in a vacuum space. Patterns, patterns, patterns. Okay, let's try. Um, there's this, there's all these little shops that sell these expensive little drinks. So can someone read situation two? We're going to cross out at least on the bottom, we're gonna change this to just be, what is the chance you pass one? Uh, 
I need to take a drink. So if someone could read that, that would be great. This is, we're trying, when we read this, your brain's trying to say, hmm, am I doing two separate things? Or am I doing one thing that I can satisfy my criteria with two different outcomes? That's going to choose which row you apply to. Peter? Thanks. Assuming you walk down a random 10 block stretch of street, the chance you pass a store that primarily sells to your students on Fifth Ave is approximately 0.34. And the chance that you pass this key smoothie shop on Forbes is 0.69. If you walk 10 blocks on both streets, what is the chance you pass one key slash smoothie shop? Hmm. Hey, brain. I've got, I've got to figure out what, what on earth is this T business? Which one of these criteria explains what I'm doing? I'm going to walk 10 blocks down that street and then 10 blocks on this street. So what do I have? What do you think? And why not overlapping? I agree with you. And I'm going on separate streets. And the criteria said, what's the chance that I can walk down Forbes and look for a tea shop and then walk down Fifth looking for a tea shop and I only find one between the two of them. So I'm looking for the probability that either I find one on A or I find one on B. But they could happen at the same time, meaning it's it's possible that I could pass a tea shop on Forbes and a tea shop on Fifth. And do I want that? Is that the criteria? No, the criteria is what's the chance of doing 10 blocks on two streets and only passing one tea shop, paying eight dollars for a smoothie. So I've got to take these components and then calculate them individually. Good, good work, Cena. I agree with you. You want to try this one together? Yeah. Okay. So I've got what? What's my event type? Well, I I agree that I think these are these are potentially overlapping events. So write down your basic relationship, and I would write in the most basic form, and then substitute in as you go. So I'm just going to copy my formula, P. A or B of overlapping, I compute that by just taking the probability of A, add it to the probability of B happening. But because I could have a tea shop on both streets, I need to subtract the probability that I would pass one on both streets. because That's not my um, outcome of interest. So notice that's the general form. Now I'm going to substitute in the words of the problem. So I'm going to say, we're going to do fifth and then fourth. So I want to know the probability of, I'm going to say a little, make a little mug, T shop on fifth or uh, T shop on Forbes. That's the that's the event I want to compute from the problem. So how do I get that? Well, I'm going to look up. Oh, I they they told me this. They told me the probability of passing a tea shop on fifth. I'm not feeling pretty good about this. I can just substitute that one in. I'm going to add that to the probability of finding passing a tea shop on Forbes. Oh, look. I remember seeing that. They told me that. Hmm. Okay. Minus, and now I got this little jazz here. So now I need to use find the probability of <coughs> T shop fifth and T shop Forbes. Hello. So now we're ready to substitute in. Here's my fifth, about a third, about a 30% chance of finding one on fifth. I noticed these, uh, there's one right 
there, and there's I know there's at least three on Forbes. Um, so now I'm just going to substitute in. This one, chance of passing it on fifth is 0.34. Well, that was simple. Add it to, uh, just get this from the problem. Probability of passing one on Forbes is 0.69. They just came right out and told me. Oh, no. What do I do next? Yeah, because yeah, that's this puppy. So I'm doing, I'm using, I'm, it's a compound situation. So now I'm going to subtract out our two probabilities multiplied. Nice work, Taylor. Minus 0 0.34 times 0 0.69. And let's see what we come out to. Crunch, 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 crunch. I've got a bunch. Taylor nominates one point eight what? One point zero three? That exceeds the potential of the universe. Yeah, that, that, that is, sorry. Okay. Point seven nine five. How many decimals? Three. Two unless otherwise specified. Two. Okay. Great. You agree, Taylor? Jen gets a gets a nod. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, point eight zero. Um, does it pass the sanity check? Lo pretty good chance on Forbes. A little bit less, about half the chance on fifth. If I do ten blocks on both, I should probably pass the tee shot. Ten blocks is plenty. Okay, this is a. This is a good one. Um, and we'll do this last one together and then we'll do the next step. Oh, we need a nurse. We need someone who wants to be a, potentially a triage nurse. This problem is for you. My mom was a triage nurse for 20 years. That was when I was pregnant. Yeah. Reader for triage? Nurses out there? Megan? You don't have to. No, I don't You have a linear with some patients who triage in the emergency room at the hospital. Policy is to manage and choose patients for assessment. Your goal is to take 12 have lacerations, and when they have some time to take some What is the probability that your triage of laceration followed by a disease? Ah, great. How many events are we talking about? How many trials? Sorry. Two, Two trials. We're going to randomly pull two people. So grab your note sheet. Which situation applies? We're doing two dependent. trials. Dependent. Megan says dependent. Why did you say this? Pull a patient out of the waiting room. So after I triage my first patient, what happens to my waiting room? It's smaller. It's a different number of people. So that's the definition of a dependent event. I agree. I don't disagree. <laughs> okay, so write down the general formula for dependent event. I've got to get your face in a little bit more. That's the general formula, and then plug in what we know. We're in the upper right. So which one are we doing? Dependent. Dependent. So I start by writing exactly what's in my notes and then I substitute from there. So I don't even worry about, I just put down exactly what's in my notes first. P, A, and B, dependent. 
is the probability of A happening times the chance that B would happen under the assumption B given A occurred. So now I'm going to substitute in the words of the problem. My A, what is the probability? First, I get a laceration, some sort of cut, followed by someone that has some sort of internal medicine issue. That's our B. So, pardon? That's a B for Bravo. Oh, yeah, for dependent. Oh, uh, okay. Given A. What's the probability that B is going to happen, assuming that A already happened? B. That's good, thank you. B, given that A happened, meaning given that I just triaged the laceration first. So now I'm going to substitute in the words of the problem. Give your brain a nice little scaffold. What's the probability that I get a laceration uh, and uh, a disease? Well, that's probability of getting a laceration first times the probability of getting a disease assuming uh, I got a laceration for my first pick. So see how I'm, I'm making notes that are more specific to the problem? Probability of a laceration times the probability of a disease patient given that my laceration was first. So that's how to break these down is, is trust the organization of the formula. Um, okay. Now, what are we, what's our general formula for probability? I don't have any decimals like I got on my tea shops. I know that it's a waiting room. So my general formula is possible or first come, they're first come first serve in the ratio that they're sitting in there. So I've got 12 out of how many are lacerations? 20. So I, the, my, my criteria could be met with any of these 12 laceration patients out of my 20 in the waiting room can, can uh, satisfy PA. So I've got the chance of drawing a laceration is 12 out of 20 patients. And then I'm going to multiply it by now. How do I get this? So if I drew a laceration, what happens to my waiting room size? It's small. Yep. But how many diseases do I still have in there? Eight. eight. So it would be times eight over 19 because I already pulled my laceration out. <laughs> go back in. Go keep waiting. It would be a lot easier. Then it would just be 12 over 20 times 12. Over, if you just dump them back in the waiting room, then your probability is independent because you could triage them again and say, oh, I've seen you. Are you still doing okay? Are you still conscious? Um, when the waiting room's overloaded, you're kind of just waiting for someone to cross a threshold in which they can't wait anymore because they passed out or something. Um, they, uh, luckily, my mom worked at an ER that was not usually backed up a lot. But I waited eight hours for uh, one ER, and I just ended up leaving and hoping that the bleeding stopped. Uh, okay. Um, nominations. It's, it's it's a it's a little these are a little little tricky. Little tricky. Ireland says point two five. Frank, what do you say? Why no clue? You can type this into your calculator. This is. Do you need a, I got a calculator. Yes, I've got it. I'm full of calculators. Frank, we don't, we don't want you uh, turning past that. So we've got some agreement. Point two, what? Okay. Um, so does it pass a sanity check? You've got a little over half of lacerations. The chance that you would get one of those on the first draw, followed by eight over 19, that's a little under half. Okay, I made the next ones for you to work on your own.
Um, in COVID vaccinations, you're going to compare Texans versus Pennsylvanians. Um, you're going to draw people from a uh, airport, your, your security screener. So I'll leave that to you uh, and your weekend journey. Um, these will follow a similar pattern. Um, last last questions are forever hold your peace on probability. Wait, what homework do you have? Part one and part two, when you take the final. Um, I had to I had to have 10 assignments, so I split them up. That's why I had to do that. Well, they have access to the grade book. As far as I know, I'm grading the final. I'm sorry? I believe that's the case. I haven't seen it yet. It has not been given to me yet. 